Hi, today we're going to be having a look at this DC electronic load and I've been after one of these for quite a long time now. Until now I've just been using a MOSFET on a heatsink with an op amp controlling it but it's all very manual control whereas this one is one where we can set the constant resistance, constant current or constant voltage or constant power and then we can uh, either test DC to DC converters, that kind of thing, or test power supplies. So this one was from Banggood, and it's at quite a reasonable price actually. Let's take a little look. So here it is on Banggood, and it's currently retailing for $140. If you do think about buying this, don't forget there's always discount codes. There's already an $18 voucher here. You can normally get somewhere between 10 and 15% off the price, so uh, never pay full price. But this is a electronic DC load it doesn't have any built-in programs, so there's nothing specific in here for testing batteries, for example, that kind of thing. It's purely a DC load where you can set the constant current, constant voltage, constant resistance, or constant power modes. But this one does have a programmable input, so it's got an RS-232 port on the back, as well as some um, general IOs, which allow you to remotely control this device. Let's take a little look at the datasheet with the specifications. So I've been sent the KP184 and it looks to be fairly good in terms of what it says on the datasheet. There's only one particularly restricting factor and that is the minimum load voltage according to this is 1 volt. So you may have trouble if you're specifically targeting testing, for example, AA batteries, that kind of thing. I don't know how true this is. We can have a quick look at that later in the video. But other than that, it's got quite a high input power capability, so up to 400 watts or 40 amps, whichever comes first. So really quite considerable uh, amount of power can be dissipated in this unit. We've also got fairly decent measuring precision according to the datasheet, so 0.05% plus 5 milliamps. So, um, you know, the general accuracy is pretty good, we've just got a little bit of um, tolerance around that for the resolution and presumably whatever... Um, ADC they're using to display the values on the front panel and then this one has RS-232 and RS-485 communications. So I think we'll start by taking this thing to pieces and having a look what's inside. It's really quite a weighty piece of equipment and it's also you know pretty well built. I've not really got too many complaints about the build quality. Some of the buttons are a little bit wonky in their positions but they've all got nice clicky tactile switches behind got a rotary encoder on the front and some binding posts on the front with also a 4mm banana jack so that's really handy. Some of these units don't have the banana jack whereas we've got the uh, best of both worlds here as well as remote voltage sensing with this BNC connector and then on the back as we saw in the picture we've got the RS-232 port, uh, we've got some GPIO we've got the exhaust, presumably there's a fan here blowing through this big heat sink and then we've got the mains input that's fused, voltage selector switch, and a mains power switch. And this thing is really quite heavy. Um, it's definitely got a standard wound transformer, but I also suspect quite a bit of weight in here is from the heatsink. So let's get this thing to pieces. And it looks like we've been sent one here that's literally just been built. So December 2019, let's slice through that label. So the construction's fairly mixed. There's a few areas where they could tidy things up, but actually it doesn't look too bad. Essentially what we've got on the top here is the main controller board. And if you remember in the datasheet, there were two models available, the 200 watt and the 400 watt. I've got the 400 watt here. And I think basically in the 200 watt model, there's just this top board and obviously the front panel. On this one, there's another daughter board at the bottom, which looks to be sort of like a slave module. It's got exactly the same components apart from... Uh, it's missing the microcontrollers and that kind of thing. So I think it literally acts like a slave and doubles up the power capability. So to actually present the load, we've got six in total of these IRFP250M MOSFETs. These are actually rated for up to 200 watts each if you can get the power out of them. So we've got six of those, so we've got plenty of power capability. And these are also actually pretty straightforward to desolder if you did manage to blow these up somehow. We've also got a temperature sensor sitting on the heatsink, so it does have a temperature controlled fan and I presume it does have some various over temperature modes to stop it from overheating. So in terms of the brains behind this unit, we've got this STM32F and it's no real surprise that we're starting to see these in everything. You get tons of processing power and these are also available sort of really cheaply, so 
Um, you know, it's good to see that we've got that there. We've got a programming header here. I don't know if you're likely to be able to read anything back and make any changes. But um, yeah, we've got really quite a powerful bit of processing here. And it also looks like the specifications probably are quite believable because the ADC that we've got here is an ADS1232 from Texas Instruments. And these are really high resolution, really high accuracy devices. I've used them many times in the past, but it's a 24-bit ADC and these really do behave very well and are very linear across the range. Obviously that 24 bits in this case is spread across the entire 150 volt range or um, the 40 amp range, which explains why we've got an excellent accuracy figure but the resolution is limited to sort of 5 milliamps or so because those 24 bits are spread over such a wide voltage or a wide current range. In terms of the construction, it visually looks a little bit messy, but with these power devices, you know, you do have to have things like resistors standing off the board, uh, which, you know, you would think, oh, they're flapping around a little bit, but you do need that break between the resistor and the board to stop the board being baked when these get hot. These green ones are obviously um, matching resistors just so that the tolerance of these MOSFETs is taken up and you don't see big loop currents flowing. Everything else sort of on the board is analog electronics. We've got Plenty of 8-pin op-amps all around the place. Uh, we've got a couple of voltage regulators, obviously electrolytic capacitors all over the place. And then all of the interfaces on the back are isolated. So we've got some optocouplers here for the digital interface. We've got some digital isolators here separating the RS-232 interface. So, you know, you've got no concerns that anything that you plug into here are going to end up referenced to the uh, electronics that you've got connected physically to the load. Where they've tried to cut corners a little bit mainly seems to be on the front panel. So you can see they didn't trim the legs off the displays. So we've got these all sticking out from the back and bent all over the place. Oddly, we've also got a screw that isn't screwed in all the way. I wonder if that's actually bottomed out on the plastic. But the board itself seems to be held in quite well and there's no uh, looseness on the buttons. So I think it must be held in place elsewhere as well. Other than that, everything else seems to be fairly well constructed. We've got Loctite on all the connections. We've also got some Celastic holding in various connectors as well. Really not too much to complain about. It just looks, generally speaking, a little bit messy, I think, really. On the top here, we have what look like current shunts, but they're not actually. These are just um, to get the current to these various MOSFETs. The current shunt itself is mounted in front of the 80mm fan, which is then attached to the heat sink, which goes all the way to the back panel. So quite a decent cooling solution. We've got the vents on the front. You can see quite clearly that we've got plenty of airflow through these. And there's also a few vents at the bottom. So we've got plenty of airflow through this device. Um, and obviously if this starts to get noisy, you could look at changing that fan. But I think fan noise is something that you're always going to expect with any DC load because you're basically just burning power in some MOSFETs. At the front here, we've got the connections to the 4mm binding post, and this all looks really quite chunky. We've got properly crimped terminals onto those, so uh, absolutely no problems with the construction here. We've got the BNC connector, which is floating in relation to the chassis, so there's no concerns that the source that you've got connected to this device are going to be referenced to the mains earth. And then just at the bottom, we've got the input from the IEC connector going to the power switch at the back, and then it goes into our mains isolation transformer. So everything is isolated with a proper transformer, no switch mode power supply in here, so no concerns that anything might be floating up because of suppression capacitors. And the chassis is earthed, although it's connected with a black wire here onto the terminal, it is connected directly to the chassis, loctited in, so, uh, you know, no real concerns there that anything is going to go wrong. Right, so these are the devices that we're going to use to check the operation of the DC load. We've got some low-cost power supplies here that are going to be some sources, mainly because these have really quite high output capability. We've got the new East Tester ET3240 4.5 digit 22,000 count multimeter, which I'm going to do a review of soon, but this is really nice. I'm quite impressed with this for the price. And first of all, just to verify the general accuracy of the voltage readings, we're just going to use Ian's PDVS2 Mini 
voltage transfer standard. So if you haven't seen the video for that, just click on the link up here. But obviously with the load turned off, we should be able to read the voltage here. So we're currently at zero volts. Let's increase that to one volt. And so we're just a little bit off here. So it said five millivolts. We're actually about 10 millivolts off here. Similar 10 millivolts again. 10 millivolts again at three volts. Yeah, so I think we've just basically got an offset error there. I didn't see whether there was any calibration options or any uh, trimmers in the device, but you can see across the voltage range, we're 10 millivolts out. So the user interface on this is pretty straightforward. First of all, we've got a mode button which changes between constant current, constant voltage, constant power, or constant resistance. We're going to test the constant current mode. And then to choose the current that you want to test at, you press the enter button. You can use the rotary encoder here to select the, um, the value of the digit. And you just use the arrow to move across to the digit that you're actually interested in. And then once you've got your value selected, you press enter again. And we can turn on the load by pressing on. So it says here that we've got it set to 1.01 amps. And we're pretty much drawing that. I have actually tested this separately, and this is absolutely spot on. So I'm really impressed with the accuracy of this meter. But uh, yeah, we're just about uh, 3 milliamp off there. Let's uh, increase the current a bit further. So we can change the current here. Let's set it to 2 amps. And again, just slightly off 3 amps, 5 amps. And we're drawing about 150 watts now. 8 amps, 230, 240 watts, and there we're drawing full 10 amps, and the fan has just kicked in on this. You can feel quite a bit of airflow. It's not actually horrendously noisy. Um, I don't know if it has more than one speed, but it's pretty quiet, quite unobtrusive. But yeah, we're drawing almost 300 watts there. Uh, absolutely no problems whatsoever, so that's pretty good. Oh yeah, it is variable control. I can hear the fan changing there. Next up, we're going to try the constant power mode. I've set this to 1 watt, and the constant power mode means that as we increase the voltage on the power supply, we should see the current going down. Now, I haven't put the um, remote sense lead on here, so we are going to see the power on the power supply a little bit higher than what we actually read on the DC load. We're also at the minimum for what the datasheet said it will operate at reliably, so we're just at 1 volt. Let's turn it on. And here you can see 1 watt is quite happily being drawn. Let's increase the voltage on here, and we should see that current drop down. And there we go. So that seems to be behaving properly. Let's increase this all the way up to max. And we've just dropped a little bit here. It's gone a little bit out of accuracy. But generally speaking, it looks okay. So we've got a slight issue with the accuracy there, but the behavior is absolutely fine. So in constant resistance mode, we can literally just set a resistance that we want this to represent. So in constant resistance, obviously, as the voltage goes up, the current goes up. So we've got that set to 100 ohms. We'll turn on the load, and then as we increase the power, we should see that going up. So yeah, sort of 6 volts, we're seeing about uh, 60 milliamps. And yeah, 31 volts, we're seeing about 310 milliamps. So that's all correct. Let's change the resistance again. So we'll take that down a bit to 50 ohms. And now we're seeing basically twice as much power being drawn. And that just goes down in harmony with the input voltage. Finally, we've got the constant voltage mode. And this is a little bit of an odd mode. Um, essentially, we want to set what's known as a compliance voltage. So some particular voltage above 5 volts. But really, this is testing the current capability of the output of the power supply. So if we turn this on... You can see what it's trying to do once we provide some current is clamp this output to 5 volts. And then as we adjust the output current, 
it just represents you know something like a zener diode for example clamping the supply rail and we just got more and more current being dumped through it right so i think that's about it for the kunkin kp184 unfortunately i can't test the higher voltages uh, this 120 volt power supply just isn't working it's drawing zero current from the mains so i suspect it's a very simple fault um but yeah I think um, we got close to the limits anyway. We were drawing about 300 watts from this white power supply. Um, and it was handling that absolutely fine. So no problems with the operation of the unit. Unfortunately, we can't test the PC interface. Although the manual illustrates some software, I can't find it anywhere. They do give instructions how to write your own firmware in the manual, which is really nice. Um, so an example of some code as well as all of the commands... So anyone who's any good at Python or whatever would have no problem interfacing with this. Now obviously the limitation on its own is this isn't a programmable DC load. So you can't get it to automatically cut off after you've drawn a certain amount of energy from a device or that kind of thing. But as a plain DC electronic load with the four different modes, I've not found anything on the market that really competes with these specifications. And it, as you saw, it behaved really well. Pretty simple user interface. The build quality is absolutely fine, no complaints whatsoever. In fact, I've seen much more expensive equipment with very similar construction to what's inside. So uh, that's why I'm saying I've got no real problems because, um, you know, although it's not absolutely the neatest and most refined design, I don't see any particular failure points there. There are a few other models which I've got my eye on. I might try and get another one in the lab that is programmable that will have all of the battery testing features and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think this is uh, really quite a nice DC electronic load, and I'm sure you'll see it in some upcoming videos. I've got various power supplies to review and test, so we'll see how it behaves with those different loads. So I think we're starting to see some really decent pieces of equipment coming from China. If you spend a little bit more than the absolute minimum, so for example, this black power supply is very cheap. I'm surprised it didn't fail earlier, because I put it through quite a lot of stress over the past couple of months. But... If you spend that little bit more, you seem to be getting some really decent pieces of equipment. So, you know, I'm really happy with this for the price. Also, this digital multimeter, which is a little bit more expensive, but nowhere near, uh, you know, more of the well-known brands. We're getting a really decent piece of equipment for not too much money if you're happy to import equipment from China. So I'm going to be reviewing this in an upcoming video. Obviously, we'll see this again uh, because I've got some power suppliers to test. Um, but yeah, we can start to see that we can get a really decent lab setup for relatively low cost. So hopefully you found the video useful. If you've got any comments, obviously leave them down below. I'll put the links to these items in the description. And until next time, thanks for watching.